tonight and we just want to welcome you again to Tri-State Baptist Temple and just look forward to another uh, night in the Lord's house. We're looking forward to Brother Eric preaching for us in just a little bit 
and uh, we just uh, are excited about the night. Again, we just want to remind you about a few uh, things that we have going on, remind you about uh, our Memorial Day activities that will be coming up. We'll have a, a float in the parade. We'll also have our annual outdoor service on the 26th, that Sunday before at 9 o'clock. Uh, there's some uh, special projects that Pastor has for us in, uh, in the bulletin. Uh, if you have uh, photos of family members in the service and those kind of things. Uh, we'd love to have a copy of those. Also, if you have a uniform of either military, police, fire, EMS, any of those kind of uh, uniforms, we're going to, I think, do a display uh, with those this year on our float if we can find those things. So if you have any of those things, uh, if you could let Pastor know, if you, we could borrow them, that would be uh, great as well, and uh, we'll use those. Of course, we'll need candy for the parade. We'll pass out tracks and candy along the parade route, so those are some things that we'll be doing for Memorial Day. And then our graduates, we want to honor them on Sunday, the 26th of this month, and we just want to have a little special time where we can honor our graduates. Uh, church camp is coming up. We're going to have a meeting next Sunday. Uh, about with our church camp staff and we'll let you know then uh, kind of what we think we want everybody to be doing and those kind of things and uh, try to get our it'll be close to our final preparations at that point and uh, uh, it's coming soon now so we'll be uh, doing that the joy group has a trip on uh, Thursday the 30th and uh, leave here at 8:30, and so that'll be uh, another trip to the flea market this time so that'll be a fun trip and I uh, hope our joy group members will mark that down uh, the men have a faithful men's breakfast this Saturday I want to encourage all of our men to come out and be a part of that and uh, it's such a good time of fellowship and uh, we have good food and a good time in God's word I hope all of our men uh, will make a special effort to come and be a part of that uh, this week uh, also our sports uh, new sports thing that club that we're going to do on Wednesdays as our uh, Wednesday youth uh, our children's ministry I'm going to have a meeting for that it's going to be that Sunday before uh, Memorial Day I'll have it probably in the evening service and uh, uh, just to give information about it it's going to start the first Wednesday of June I think the 5th so that'll be close but uh, there's just not another time since we have church game coming up as well to do that meeting but if you're wanting to know more about that and uh, have questions about that, that's when I'm going to do that. So just so you know, and uh, you know I'm not, I haven't forgot about it, but uh, we'll uh, do that as well. So we just look forward to all these things. Uh, keep praying for Pastor uh, and his, uh, Miss Angie and uh, as they're gone uh, with the seniors from Grace Christian School, and uh, they'll be traveling back on Tuesday, uh, but be praying for them as they travel and uh, uh, moving around. Uh, they're in Tennessee now, and they'll be back. So uh, be praying for them, and uh, so we look forward to having them back. Uh, we'll ask our men at this time to come. We'll take up our tithes, offering, and uh, our faith promise. Who you guys picked to today? <laughs> there we go. All right, well, let's pray. Amen. Thank you. 
again. Uh, for the opportunity we get to have uh, a church camp, we have all the boys and girls and the teenagers that come uh, be able to spend a week where we focus on you. We, we have a good time, play games and have fun, but we spend uh, most of our time under the teaching and the preaching of your word. Uh, we just ask that you go before us and prepare the hearts of those who are going to be there and uh, the men that will be speaking, Lord, and just help us to have a great week. We want to see children come to know you as Savior. We want to see uh, children and teenagers just making decisions to live their lives for you. So we ask you to uh, just bless our camp. Uh, we ask you to bless this offering, Lord. Just help us as we continue to uh, give for this uh, ministry that you've allowed us to participate in, that we would give uh, in a way that would honor you, bring glory to you, uh, just because we love you and we uh, want to do your work. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all you do. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, if you have an offering, raise your hands. Boys and girls will come to you. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for helping us out. If you're a lady here today and you weren't able to be in the services this morning, if you were in Super Church or the nursery or one of those things, we did have uh, a gift for all of our ladies in honor of Mother's Day, uh, one of these pots and uh, flower pots with some seeds. And if you didn't get one of those, make sure you get one before you leave. There's still uh, some left up here. And uh, so uh, we want to just remember all of our ladies and are thankful for them, uh, all the ladies we have in our church. Also, I want to mention, normally this would be the Sunday evening we would have our uh, business meeting. Uh, we're not going to have that tonight since pastor's not here. We don't have any pressing business or any of those kind of things. So we'll, uh, we'll take care of that when pastor's back. So uh, just wanted to let you know if you're a wandering, there's not going to be a business meeting to, tonight. But before Eric comes and preach for us, Brother Doug is going to come sing a song for us. You come ahead, Doug.
Good evening. Can you hear me? I was, I was going to say, uh, I'll be short tonight, but I figure everybody will laugh at me. <laughs> That's an old one. <laughs> it's good to be here tonight. It's good to, uh, uh, I, I appreciate Pastor Tim uh, allowing me to, to, to preach tonight. And uh, uh, I'm just thankful for this church and, and what it means to me. And uh, uh, it's, it's a good place to be. But yeah, I was sitting at home and, and uh, after Pastor Tim asked me to preach tonight and uh, was wondering what I was going to preach on. And I started thinking about us together. I mean, since we're all here, let's talk about the body of Christ. I mean, this is what we are. We're the body of Christ here on this earth. You know, he's not here anymore. Where is he at? He's in heaven. He's at the right hand of the Lord. He's in each one of our hearts. If we're saved... And we're part of his body here. We, we're what he uses to, to, uh, to do his work here. And I was reading Romans chapter uh, 15. Let's look at that real quick. Romans chapter 15. We'll read verses 1 through 14. It says, We... Then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy. As it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he said, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, and all ye people. And again, Isaiah said, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you today, this evening, Lord, for your word. Lord, we want to thank you for, for saving us, Lord, for, for sending your Son to die for us on the cross. God, I, I personally thank you. Uh, Lord, I know that there's no way in me that there's any good. And I know that only through you can I go to be with my Heavenly Father someday and never even enter in, into that place. And Lord, I just want to thank you for that, Lord, uh, that as good as I can be, the, the most that I can muster up of goodness in me, is as filthy rags to you, Lord. I just want to praise you and thank you for what you've done for me and how that you died for me and for my sins and you forgave me at Calvary. And Lord, tonight I pray that you would help, Lord, open these scriptures uh, to us, Lord, to, to me. Uh, that, Lord, that you, that you might help us learn to, to be your body. And we just want to thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Uh, life together. That's what I've got titled here is, is life together. Um, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I kind of geek out about this. Uh, I love studying now how the body works, the processes of the body. I think it's so neat. This morning I geeked out on the kids in Sunday school and was telling them about how the eye works. And I just think that it's neat how that when we, you know, look at something, we see what it is and it sends a message to our eye and back to the lens in our eye and it flips upside down, sends it to our brain and our brain unscrambles the message and tells us what we can see. It's neat because God is amazing in how we, He created us. You know, I, the more that I go to school and you hear stuff that is supposed to confirm evolution, the more I see God in it and how great that He is and how awesome He is. And I, I'm just sitting back and thinking, why can people say that that this happened over an amount of time when this is by the hands of an awesome creator. And then when we're thinking about the body, and you know, when I think about the, uh, the body of Christ, I also think about my body and, and some, some of the ways that they work are, are together. That uh, I know that, uh, that in my body, um, that, I, I, that my body just doesn't want to focus on one part of it. Uh, you know, you have to, homeostasis, the, you got to keep it all in one in thing. If you... If you get cold, what happens if you get cold and you're out in the cold and you got a t-shirt on like tonight if you're going to be outside and it's, it dips down to you know, 52 and you got your t-shirt on and your shorts and, and your sandals on? What's going to happen after a while we're out there? You know what? Shiver. Shivering is the neatest thing in the world. It's, it's a way that your body... Warms itself back up. When it's cold, it's just, hey, i got to move around. i got to start moving around. i got to do this. And your body is neat because it takes all the heat from the outside. You notice that your fingers and your nose and your ears get cold. Why? It's because your body is saying, hey, the important stuff's in the middle. Let's get all the blood to the middle part. And the outside parts, you know, they just get real cold because they don't have the circulation. We have an amazing body, and it takes care of itself. But a lot of times in our Christian lives, we want to worry about us and us alone. Not, not, not to sound selfish, not like we're selfish, but a lot of times we worry about ourselves more as an individual than we do the body of Christ. We need to be working together. Uh, you know, in our body, if one thing breaks down, if we've got one thing that really has a problem, you know, wham, you know, we can be in, in real bad shape, can't we? If one little thing, one little tiny part of our body, if there, there's a little tiny thing that hangs down off the back of your brain called your hypothalamus, if it messes up, guess what happens? Everything messes up. There's nothing that's going to be right. Everything's going to be wrong. It's going to be, everything's going to go wrong. So it's kind of like the body of Christ when we think about it. Um, you know, we all need to be where we need to be as Christians. Uh, you know, we as a, as a church, you know, we work together. This is, this is us. This is our part of the body. And uh, we, send, we tend sometimes to focus on the individual self. And the Bible kind of gets us and tells us to put the focus on the body of believers a lot of times as a whole. And, uh, you know, just in these few verses, we'll look at just some of the principles that were laid down in the book of Romans of how to live together in Christ and how to be what we're supposed to be as a whole. Uh, let's look at verse 1 again out of that, chapter 15, verse 1. It says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Um, out of that verse, what do we... How should we approach being part of the body of Christ? Well, we, we don't need to, to live to just please ourselves. You know, Christ didn't live like that. Jesus didn't live like that. He li lived for others. Uh, look at all the things He did. But a lot of times when we as Christians, we kind of get in our own little Christian box. And we, and we get in our box and we know that we got to go out and we got to spread the word. But, you know, we have people around us, all the way around us, uh, the people in our church and... Uh, um, we might have struggling brothers and sisters. And I've struggled in church. I don't know about anybody else, but uh, as a Christian, I've struggled. And in my life, I've had people come to me that were stronger Christians at the time, that were strong Christians. I remember just a few years ago, uh, Pastor Tim came and got me at work. He said, Eric, let's go have, have lunch together. And we had a, a good lunch together, and I don't even know if he, if he thought this is help. I was going through a rough time. And I don't know if he even thought this helped, but that, was, that really helped me, him sitting and talking with me, talking about the Bible and, and just saying, Eric, are you okay? You know, sometimes it just takes a, a little bit. And, uh, you know, we all come into this, into this body 
And it amazes me. We all come into this body, and each one of us has a different background. You know, every one of us comes from a different place. We have a different uh, place that we, we, we lived. You know, I grew up in Burlington. Some of you guys grew up in South Point. That's the only two places around here, right? That, Burlington and South. No, we, we, we're com- from different places. We're from, uh, from different places in the world even. But, uh, you know, we all come together with different backgrounds into one thing. And we, we come from different generations too. You know, we got, you look around in the church and we got young Christians. I see young fellas out there that can look at my kids and they say that they know Christ is their Savior. And, and you know, they're young. And then I look around and there's some people a little older, you know. We get, I'm not going to go into ages. We've got varied ages in the, in the group. And you know what else we come to Christ with? We come to Christ with different baggage. Each of us has different baggage, you know. And we all come together and we're all supposed to work together in Him, for Him. And you know what amazes me? It works. It works. It works when we keep our eyes on who we're supposed to, to do. So how do we do this? How, how do we come together as a group and... And, and work through this thing, thing together, uh, when we come together and we realize that we're on the same journey. You know, I can, I, I can give you my testimony when I was saved. You know, I was saved right down that hallway and down those steps. I teach a Sunday school uh, class. We just moved our Sunday school room downstairs. I was so excited because that's the, the room, not the exact room. That's the room that I heard the message of when I was about Jesus when I was saved in that little room down there that I teach my class in now. I'm excited about that. When we said we're going to move down there, woo, I thought that was great because I remember somebody in that room down there, his name was Ed Childers, and he, he took the time to be part of that body of Christ and to teach a, a Sunday school class. And in that Sunday school class, I sat there one, one day, 1978, 79, I'm sorry, 1979. It was a long time ago. <laughs> And he shared the gospel with me. And he said, if anybody wants to come outside and me show you in the Bible how to be saved, I'm going to walk out right after, the, after we get done with, the, with this. And he said, if anybody wants to know in the Bible how to be saved, just follow me. And I remember being scared to death. My knees were shaking and wobbling. And I got up so, out, and I walked outside into the bigger room right in front of this hole that used to be in the ground back there. Everybody's laughing about the hole. There was a hole back there. I sat in one of them little itty-bitty tiny chairs that we had, and he flipped through the Bible and he showed me different verses on how to be saved. That was great. And I remember asking Jesus to be my Savior at that point in time, and and he came into my heart and his life. And you know what? We're on that journey together as a body of believers, as a group of believers. You know, a lot of times we uh, in that group, we we tend to, to, to think about ourselves probably a little too much. But you know what? We're going to look around, and I guarantee you somebody in here is somebody in here is going through a rough spot. Somebody in here is going through a rough spot. Somebody in here is struggling. Somebody's, somebody's in pain. You know, as we as Christians today, we need to be there for our brothers and sisters. That's the only way we can get through this. You know, it's too hard. I can't imagine. I don't understand how the unsaved world goes through life without Jesus. It is beyond me to understand how somebody can, can be faced with the things that we're fa- we face all the time in, in our lives and stand there and take that without Jesus, without having somebody to lean on, without having somebody to go to, without having brothers and sisters that care enough for you to pray for you or to care enough for you to say, hey, I understand that you're struggling right now. But I want you to know if you need anything, I'm here for you. That's a big deal. It's a big deal to me. What's a mature Christian do? Well, they help. And that's who we need to be as Christians. Uh, you know, we're on the same journey. Some might be a little farther along than others on the journey, but we're still on that journey together. We need to be there for one another. We need to be mature for one another. We need to, uh, to be the kind of people that we're supposed to be in Christ so that we can help our brothers and sisters out. Let's look at verses 5 and 6. It says, Now the God of patience and consolation, once He do grants you 
to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus, that ye, ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've only seen this once, but I, I saw somebody have a stroke once. It was horrible. It was, it was scary. And can I tell? It was my dad. It was horrible. He was in the bathroom, and he came out of the bathroom, and I heard him mumble trying to say Barbara, but it, he did, it didn't come out that way. And I remember seeing my dad try to take a step but the thing was, one side of his body, his brain was telling him to do one thing, and the other side didn't want to do anything. And it wasn't working together. There was no unity in his body. And my dad fell down on the floor, and it just it freaked me out. He was the strongest person I ever uh, had ever known. And to see him like that, and to, you know, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. But for somebody, uh, their body to not be in unison or have unity with the other part of their body. It was a horrible thing. But, you know, as Christians, a lot of time in the body of Christ, we're out of union with another. A lot of times we're not on the same uh, page, you know. Uh, um, where does disunity come from, too, a lot of times? It's when we, as, as, as Christians, try to follow somebody other than the Lord. That might be ourselves. It's when we try to do our own thing. And, you know, you might have a, a, a people in the church trying to serve the Lord, but when you're trying to serve yourself, you're fighting against them. We need to, to strive for unity, and the only way that we can have unity is through Christ. You know, it seems like that's always the answer. You know, it seems real theologically just simple, but I think it is. <laughs> How do we have unity in, in our church? Through Christ. Through Christians looking towards the Lord for the answers. We're looking in the Lord to the Lord for, Lord, how can I be the Christian that you want me to be, Lord? How do I serve you? What do I need uh, to do to serve you, Lord? Um, uh, through Christians praying and, and seeking the Lord. And through Christians reading their Bible and coming to church. Um, uh, we need to follow Christ in, in our Christian lives. We need to focus on Christ. I remember when... A long, and do you use the, the green tractor out here? You do? Was it a learning curve for you? Had you done it before? I hadn't done it before. Hadn't done it before? It was a learning curve for me when I started doing it. I remember mom worked in daycare, and I, I thought, dad was teaching me how to do this. This was years and years ago. And he, mom walked out there, and I can remember, I just learned how to drive this thing. So here you are bouncing around on this crazy thing, and it's got a, like an arrow on the front. You know the arrow on the front of it? So that's what I used. I'll give you my, my trick. You do it better than I do anyway. But here's my trick. This is what I did. Mom came out there, and I remember just uh, bouncing right out front here. And I, and I noticed she was looking, so I kind of looked over there at her. And then when I got to the end, I turned around and looked, and my, I'd mowed this way <laughs> all over the place. It was all over the place. So I kind of figured out for me, here's what I did. There's a little arrow on the front of it, right up there in the front. And if I focus my eyes on like just a little section of grass way up there and put that arrow right on that piece of grass and didn't take my eyes off of that place that I go to, guess what? My, my row stayed straight. You know, that, that was kind of neat, you know. A lot of times in my Christian life, I don't want to keep my eyes on what I'm supposed to. I got spiritual ADHD. <laughs> Sometimes I'm all over the place. You know, I'm really bad about that. The Lord's trying to teach me a lesson, and I'm like, look, something's shiny, and I go the other way. <laughs> and when I look back at my life after that, man, I'm just all over the place. But when I keep my eyes on Him and I look back, I can look straight at what I'm supposed to do, and, and when I get to the place where I can, I can see, man, it just it strays an arrow. And the Lord's, you know, He's, yeah. he's blessing. He's blessing. I need those blessings. I need those blessings. And as a church, together as a body of the Christ, man, we just need to be focused on our, focused on the goal. Focused on the goal as individuals, but focused on the goal as a church and as the body of Christ and be in unity. I, man, I appreciate my brothers and sisters out there, the new ones and the old ones. I, I love my church. I love the people in my church. Um, look at verse 7. Verse 7. 
Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. How should we accept each other? You know, we all come with different baggage, like I said, from different backgrounds, from different places. We're all different. Some of us have way more quirks than others. I'm quirky. I got all kinds of... I got all kinds of character defects. But how did the Lord how did the Lord accept you? He accepted me just like I am. You know, I got all kinds of weird things going on in my head. <laughs> Most of it spills out. It's embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> but that's the way the Lord accepted me. And who am I if we have a new member to the body of Christ? And I'm not talking about our church. I'm just saying out there, who am I to look at that person and go, oh, they're not as clean as I want them to be. <laughs> or they're not as, as straight-laced or forward as I want them to be. Or they're not this particular way. Man, the, the Lord saved me as a dirty sinner. And for the grace of God, that's what I am. I'm so thankful that he took me. And the Bible says, even as he is perfect, so are we in this world. And if I had asked you, are you perfect? What would the answer be? But I'd say this, but the Bible says, even as he is perfect, talking about Jesus, so are we in this world. Are we perfect? We're perfect by provision, not by practice. Christ has provided me perfection where I can stand in heaven one day with, with God the Father. I'm not perfect by practice, but I'm a joint heir in Christ, fully adopted by Him. And I, that just excites me. And who would be, we be to, to not accept a brother or sister, somebody that's come to know Christ because they're different or they're you know, a little what we think is off or something? Look at verse 14. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Here's the part that is hard, I think, for a lot of people in the church. It's hard for me. Sometimes we're called to correct one another. That's scary, isn't it? Talk about making people mad. <laughs> we can make people mad, can't we? If we do it in ourselves. If we come up and say, I don't think you're doing right, and it's, a, it's something we've trumped up, man, we can be in trouble there. Spiritual maturity. What's spiritual? I, you know, I'm so, I'm so country, I guess. I'm not country. I'm just so... I put spiritual maturity ain't just knowledge. <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> It's not just knowledge. You know, we can have a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of people out there that are unsaved that has great knowledge of the Bible. But that's not where our spiritual maturity is. It's also being the right kind of person, the person that Christ wants us to be. And a lot of times there might be a time to come someday where you might have to be that person that you see somebody struggling out there, and it's your place. And it might be your place. You can't just say it's the pastor's place. You can't say it's the assistant pastor's place. It might be somebody's place. Now, if you're in the right spot spiritually, it might be that kind of place where, say, if I was, I spend a lot of time in the woods. I like to hike. I like to, to canoe, backpack, do all kinds of crazy stuff out there. And, you know, if I was walking through the woods with Nikki, which it wouldn't happen. I don't think she would ever go back out in the woods. She did once, and I made her mad. So, uh, did eight mile hike around Vesuvius. You guys all got mad at me on that one. Um, if we walked around Vesuvius again, and I seen her taking a step, and she almost she was getting ready to tromp on a copperhead. Oh, <laughs> I would be a horrible person to say, "Hey, Nikki, you be, you might want not want to take that step, because in that step that you're getting ready to take, you might just really get hurt." You know what? Sometimes as Christians, we need to be that person. Say, "Hey, you're getting ready to jump into something that you're going to get hurt with, and you're not just going to hurt you; you're going to hurt the church." You know, that might be what we have to, but in doing that, we need to be the right kind of person. You know, we can, uh, uh, you know, if we can warn and we can admonish one another, but we can do it in love. 
which is what we as the body of Christ, this is what the Bible says. He says, And myself also persuaded you, brethren, that ye be full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. The Bible says that we might have to do that someday. We need to be the spiritual people that we're supposed to so we can do that in the right heart and the right spirit. You know, as Christians, we need each other to be where we are, to be right. We need each other. And also, not only that, we're also responsible for one another. That's scary. You're responsible for me, Pastor Evan. <laughs> That's a scary thought. If a brother takes a wrong turn, we're not supposed to gnaw on him. I've seen a lot of people gnaw on people. You get this person over here talking about this person over here and this person over here. They get stoved up and they won't talk to person A over here anymore and it just causes a rift in the church. You know, we got to be careful of that thing. Can't be gossiping. Can't be talking about one another. We, we, we can't be that, that kind of person. We need to be the person with the right heart and the right spirit to where if it comes to that place that we can be uh, what the Lord wants out of us and be a help and not a hindrance. Look at verses 30 through 33 and we'll finish with this. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I might be delivered from them that did not believe in, in Judea, and they or I'm sorry, and that my service which I have from Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may be and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you. Amen. What are we talking about there? That we as Christians should pray for one another. We need to be in prayer about one another. You know, think about our prayer lives. And, and, and you know, I say when I think about our prayer life, I'm pretty much telling you a lot of times that when I pray, this is what's happening. I'm pretty, you know, sometimes, and I notice sometimes my prayers, I, I think they're uh, sometimes selfish because I'll say, Lord, I got this problem, or I got this problem, and this is going on in my life, and I need you for this, and I need you to do this for me, and Lord, I appreciate this. Now, I'm not, 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 not be asking for money or wealth or anything like that, but, you know, a lot of times I have, but um, in our prayer life, we need to pray for one another. We don't need to have just a selfish prayer life. What about the prayer life? I, I had a, uh, I went to a, uh, a seminar once, and I remember the, the preacher that he uh, preached on, have you ever prayed and didn't ask for anything? That's pretty serious, isn't it? You think about prayer, and a lot of times we think prayer is a grocery list from the Lord. <laughs> I need this, and I need this, and I need this. But what about just thanking the Lord? Just go, go to him for a change and just say, Lord, just, I just got to thank you for everything that you've done for me, everything that you're doing. I want to thank you for the members of my church. You know, there's nothing about wrong with going through you know, your, your mind and seeing everybody's faces and pray for this person and pray for this person. You know, we're in this thing together. We need to pray for one another. Have you ever said to somebody that they said... Uh, Hey, I need you to pray for me. And you go, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. And then you just bold-faced lied to them a lot of times. You know you ain't going to get back to pray. Yeah, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Maybe forget. We'll say forget. <laughs> we need to pray for one another. How much of your prayer life is centered on asking and focusing on you as opposed to other people? I think that if we get in the right spot spiritually, then our prayer lives will change a lot towards other people's needs, not ours. In conclusion, <laughs> if I go outside, and I, I'm not going to do this, by the way. <laughs> if I go outside and plant a garden this year, I ain't going to. <laughs> if 
If I go out and plant a garden and I get some beans, some half runners, and I plant them, and you see them all growing, vining out, growing. When them beans start going, if I start snipping them little beans off, what's going to happen to them beans? They ain't going to grow no more, are they? If they come disconnected from the, the vine, they're dead. It's the same way with us. If we live the way the Bible says here that we're supposed to, we need to be integral with the body of Christ. We need to be, to be part of it. We need to, to need each other. And I think that's something today that, that we miss in churches in general is being Christians not only as individuals but the Christians as a group and relying on each other and, and struggling through the hard times with each other. You know, I'm really bad about this. this. I'm horrible about this. I can do it myself. I am the world's worst of not accepting help not saying I can do it myself. And a lot of times I've done that with the Lord. I can live it myself. I can't. I can't. And sometimes I'm, I might be weakened to the point where I might need you guys and vice versa because that's who we need to be together. We're a part of the living body of Christ together today. The living body of Christ that's... that's, that's what God uses to move today. We're part of that. You know, you hear people being excited about their teams. What better team could we be on than in this body? And my prayer today is this for me, that Lord would help me to be the member of the body that I need to be and to remember you guys and, and, to, and, and to pray for you and, and to be who I need to be in the body so I can be a help to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. Lord, I don't know anybody's heart here. And, I, and, and, and Lord, even uh, this message to me, it was, it was difficult to come up with. And I, Lord, I, I know you've said things to me. Um, but Lord, I pray that today, if, if you've spoken to anybody's heart and they, they need to, uh, to make a movement for you, that you would help them to be that person. Lord, if, if anybody here, Lord, uh, uh, needs to spend time in prayer with you, I pray that they would do it. Lord, we just want to thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for the message this morning. And uh, Lord, we just want to lift you up and say thank you, God. You're so good to us and you're so awesome and you're so great. And Lord, I am privileged and thank you so much to be part of your body today. Help me, God, uh, to be the person that I need to be, the member of the body that I need to be that's mature, mature and strong, that I could be helpful towards other people. Lord, help me to pray. Help me to, uh, to have spiritual discernment. Uh, Lord, that, that uh, I could be used of you for anything that you would need. We just want to lift you up today. And uh, Lord, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand and sing a verse on page 304. 
pondering these things that God gives us and allow the Holy Spirit to continue to work on your heart, continue to show you things. There's been times I can remember going home after a uh, a sermon and maybe the next day or two all of a sudden the Lord shows me something that I heard in a message or or those kind of things and he helps me with those things and I, I know the Lord's helped me tonight uh, with the message and I hope he has for you too appreciate brother Eric uh, preaching for us uh, tonight well pastor will be back uh, so be praying for him as he's traveling back uh, I hope everyone has a good week we'll be back on Wednesday with all of our normal normal things and so be back in your place and uh, we just look forward to seeing what the Lord will do with us uh, this week. But we'll finish uh, today with just a word of prayer. Brother Doug, will you pray for us, please? Thank you.